man himself he has quite a CV uh, let's first of all get to know who Paul Odindo is the engineer himself yeah. okay yeah. Uh, so I'm aware you're a lecturer yes I'm a lecturer at the Zitec University mm -hmm. and other public universities mm -hmm. and I'm also working with the Kenya power on a contractual basis mm -hmm. so those are my uh, areas of specialization how, how did you, you know, g get interest in, uh, you know, this line of work? Now, I got interested in this line of work when I was still at primary school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can remember when I was uh, schooling at Arombo Primary School in Kabonyo Kanyagual. Mm -hmm. uh, the primary school was not having good infrastructure. And then there was a time when somebody came to electrify those buildings. And I want to state categorically that that was the point when I became very interested in engineering activities. You saw someone do it and you loved it. Yeah, I saw someone doing electrifying the building, the old building. Mm -hmm. And that was when I was in Standard 6 during that time. Mm -hmm. And I got very... Uh, very interested on how the electrification was taking place mm -hmm. and from that point I got interested in pursuing engineering as a career mm -hmm. and specifically electrical engineering electrical engineering yes because but engineering is very wide it's wide huh? it's very wide uh, uh, um, in fact it has branches from A to Z starting with aeronautical engineering mm -hmm. Uh, with the letter A and up to Z. So we have a very wide profession uh, in engineering. called engineering. So if someone, yeah. if someone wants to be an engineer, yes. they have to get to know that uh, engineering has a specific, uh, has its specificity. Uh, specificity yeah. uh, when you look at uh, the, the 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 line of work in engineering there is aeronautical engineering yes. uh, and where w which is your line of work now uh, my line of work is specifically uh, dealing with power systems okay. i majored in power systems when i was in my fifth year at the university uh -huh. so power system is also divided into two we have uh -huh. heavy current engineering uh -huh. and light current engineering. <laughs> so mine was dealing with the heavy current engineering. Wow. That wow. one is involving systems which are using um, uh, heavy current. And, 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 and this is what enabled you to now get to the point where right now you are a lecturer at a university. Exactly. And I'm also practicing as an engineer. In fact, uh -huh. even after this interview, I am going to uh, supervise a certain site where we are electrifying a certain area and we are also building a power plant, a small mm. power plant which can supplement uh, what we already have in the country. You know we have a deficit mm. in uh, power generation. Mm -hmm. We yeah, don't have yeah. enough. Yes, yes. And that's one of the challenges we have in this country. But mm -hmm. now, as young engineers, we are coming up with uh, several ideas and projects uh, on how to bridge the gap mm -hmm. so that we have the enough, enough power in this country. Um, and uh, Ramagoko, even before you continue, mm -hmm. when we talk about engineering, mm -hmm. you know, some people don't even know what engineering is. All about. Yeah, and, and that's actually where I was, yeah. I, I was coming to. Yes. Um, maybe you can, you can just give us just a brief um, you know, the definition of what engineering is all about. Now, uh, Ramaguko, I want to tell you that uh, in this country you cannot even call yourself an engineer mm. if you have not come up with a tangible project which can help uh, solve the problems of the society. Parents like, call them, themselves who engineer, who you engineer, who you engineer, and he has not even done any engineering <laughs> project. <laughs> so I want to tell you, like right now, I'm proud to be called engineer, followed Indo, because even a project which I had at the university has now become a reality. I'm developing um, a, a polygraph. This is a device uh, which is going to um, help even the government curb this issue or this man is called corruption. A polygraph is just a, a, de, a, a detector or a lie detector. We mm -hmm. fondly call it a lie detector. Mm -hmm. So it is a device which when you connect it to the portability of anybody, 
then you pose three or four questions to that particular individual. You can determine. Then de depending on how that individual responds, mm -hmm. then there is what we call responses from the, 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 the answer that individual is going to give when you pose a question to them. Those responses will be uh, focused on the screen in terms of Lesuguas figures. Then we sit down as engineers and analyze those Lesuguas figures and conclude whether that particular person is lying or saying the truth. Mm -hmm. And this is a polygraph which is in its advanced stage and it can uh, even be implemented if the government is ready. Mm -hmm. uh, last month I was talking uh, to my uh, political leaders in uh, Kisumu County mm. to allow me to implement this device in their offices or in their uh, public offices. What was the outcome of the whole conversation? And the outcome is negative because you see the corruption is uh, like a cancer even down there. So they have refused uh, to implement this idea and this idea is my brainchild. And you see now they are avoiding this idea because they know uh, most of them are very corrupt. So you're, so you're saying for you to be an engineer, you must have an idea and you must have gone through a given uh, uh, line of work in, in, in academia. Let me put it in uh, simple terms. For yes. you to be an engineer, mm. you must have come up with a, a, a project, an engineering a project, project uh -huh. which can solve a societal problem mm -hmm. whether that mm -hmm. problem is small or big but that uh, project you have come up with must have solved a certain uh, societal problem mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. country or in the area of your in, uh, residence because normally people come up with uh, uh, those projects after surveying where they are the okay. problems of uh, the area they reside in and this happens after uh, after like uh, uh, passing through some or at the end uh, at the end of the stages in uh, in, in school uh, let's say after 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 university or at what stage should it exactly be? that's why even the curriculum which we went through because mm. i went through 844 system yeah. that curriculum was having an idea of starting to prepare uh, pupils or even students right from high school. Uh, we have a program called Kenya Science and Engineering Fair. Yes. This program is trying to align even students right down there to come up with projects, engineering projects. Mm -hmm. So when you come to the university, now you will now do it in a better way. Because at the high school level, it is just like a preparation uh -huh. to enable you start thinking about uh, that line. So now engineer, uh, you said you, you developed interest in engineering when you were in class 6. When I was in class 6. Class 6. Yes. Uh, it, it begs the question, for someone who is watching you today, yes. uh, they still don't have an idea or a clue about what they want to do for their career. What is the process or the, uh, the procedure? How can one be able to find or identify their career path, especially in a field like engineering? That's a very good question, Ramagoko. In fact, uh, that was supposed to be the basis of our discussion because let me tell you, identifying a career path mm. or identifying a talent mm. is the major challenge in uh, any career path. Mm -hmm. So in fact, I'm trying to think that if that person could have not come, where, uh, to that school where I was studying, in that primary school. Yes. Then I could have not even identified my talent. But I want to give the youths, especially those who are still young, those who still don't know their talents, those who have not identified their talents, I want to give them three major ways of how they can uh, identify their talents mm -hmm. at an early age. Mm -hmm. And then once you have identified your talent, then you stick with it. Mm -hmm. You stick with it up to the highest level of education. So these are three ways of talent identification. These are three ways of talent ident identification. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, okay, Le uh, let's go. Number one. Number one uh -huh. on how you can identify talent, your talent is 
to identify what thrills you at childhood. Uh -huh. And that is why even uh, in America, uh, America is more advanced in terms of uh, talent identification because they have resources. When you want to find out uh, what thrills a, a young one, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. then you have to give that young one several resources then you will just realize that from the several resources, what we call paraphernalia of uh, uh, talent identification, you surround the kid with paraphernalia of talent identification. Now, then from there, uh -huh. the kid will just identify uh, one particular paraphernalia which thrills uh, the kid. Then from there now, the kid will, uh, will now be developed based on what uh, the kid has just identified from a group of resources. In other words, you're saying mm -hmm. you give them an environment that has vari a variety of things to do. Mm -hmm. um, they can play with this, that, yes, yes, and yes. through that you'll find out what thrills them. What thrills uh, them. And, and, and uh, this is regardless of um, whether someone is indoor or outdoor. This or is regardless of whether you are indoor or outdoor. Okay. You just provide the resources for the young one. Okay. Several resources, because I've told you in this career path, there are a lot of careers we can pursue as uh, individuals. And does this also vary with age? This one does not vary with age. In fact, I was coming to that point because that was the initial process mm -hmm. of talent identification. Then if you are past that age, and you had not gone through that process, then you can still identify this uh, talent when you are an adult. Now, when you are an adult, what you need to be given mm. uh, is a chance just to identify what consumes your time most, what you can uh -huh. do mm -hmm. to an extent that you lose track of time. You get uh -huh, the point. Uh -huh. What you can find yourself doing to an extent that you now lose the track of time. Because you are, you are so occupied with this. You are so occupied with this uh, activity to an extent that you even forget what you are supposed to do uh, the next hour. And this is a positive activity. And this yeah. is a positive ad activity. And I want to uh, discourage the youths because the youths think that watching soccer is a talent. Watching soccer, because most of them are engrossed. You're saying in watching, not playing. Watching, watching is not a talent, or watching is not a career. Watching soccer is not a talent or a career. Because but so playing, playing soccer, uh -huh. getting involved in, in it, doing it, is what can constitute a career when you are doing it passionately. Passionately. Yeah, passionately. Eh? And uh, 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 Ramaguka, I want to tell you that 63% uh, of even the workforce in this country mm. are not happy with what uh, they are doing in their workplace. Because they, they, they don't love it. Because they don't love it. Which means they pursued careers which they were not even passionate about. So for you to be able to find out what you, uh, career you would most likely fit in is when you find that you like doing something yes. a lot, yes. that you, could, you should develop a talent from that. Exactly. Uh, okay, so that, is, that was number one. What thrills you? What thrills you? Uh, an individual. Uh, could, do we go to number two now? Uh, and I've just said number two, when now you have come to an adult uh -huh. stage, uh -huh. And now uh, you, you still don't know how to identify your talent. Yes. Then you can <coughs> also get involved in an activity that which occupies, occupies mm -hmm. your mind and you can even lose track of time while mm -hmm. doing this particular mm -hmm. activity. So, so that one can also be used to identify mm -hmm. the talent. Mm -hmm. of an individual. So number one is what thrills you, number mm -hmm. two what occupies your time, what, yes. what, what, what occupies you. Yes. Uh, you said there are three. There, there were three points. Uh -huh. Then the last point which is also very, uh, very, very important mm -hmm. is talking to an expert. Uh -huh. talk, talk about it. Yeah, talk mm -hmm. about it. Talking to an expert. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, talking to an expert means uh, that you seek 
more information from uh, career counselors because mm -hmm. we have people who have uh, studied this this uh, identification of careers mm -hmm. <coughs> and you can consult them uh, they are uh, uh, career counselors and that is why even right now i'm pleased with the government because the government is even trying to set career centers mm -hmm. right from primary school to secondary school to the university all right now so we have career counselors mm -hmm. who can guide uh, students who have not even identified their talents then they are guided accordingly in terms of even posing questions to them we have aptitude questions you can post to an individual then depending on how they respond to such questions you can guide them accordingly now what are the opportunities that are available in engineering especially in, com in terms of career development in engineering yes yes the opportunities are very very many mm -hmm. because you realize even in this country uh, we have uh, construction going on almost on a daily basis but the challenge the youth of this country have is that these opportunities are there but they are being given to chinese for example they are being, being given to uh, uh, germany the contractors from germany and yet we have people in this country who can even undertake this opportunity do you have kenyan engineers who have capable of you know coming up just, rising up to the occasion i've just given you an example of myself and the i know to, to, to the county, to government, the county of government of kisumu and they refused in total that this device will uh, expose mm -hmm. uh, the county government and i want to tell you ramagoko that uh, this is something we should drum up support for as youths of this country because we have a lot of youths with talents we don't even have resource centers where these talents can be nurtured uh, right from where i come from uh, uh, i come from a place called kabonyo kanyagwa Mm -hmm. In that area, we don't even have one resource center where youths can be nurtured, where experts who can guide the youths in terms of uh, talent identification mm -hmm. are not there. The centers are not there. And this is a very big challenge uh, in this country. Now, um, for, for, for someone who hasn't yet gotten an interest in engineering, yes. um, how, how should someone be able to understand the benefits of, uh, you know, uh, uh, of engineering, especially as a career, mm -hmm. considering the fact that they are still not yet, the mind has not yet been, been made up? Because, yes, it is a fact that at some point so you have to, to weigh out which path do I take from this point? Someone is doing their, their, their national examinations this year, they are yet to discover yes. themselves in this path. So um, how best can you, you know, prepare yourself for a career like this? And how best can you also be able to, to look out for the potentials th 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 that are exist in engineering? Ramagoka, I want to tell you that we have septogenarians and octogenarians, uh, those who, who are engineers long time ago those who have experience in in engineering septogenarians and octogenarians are um, by definition what exactly for those who may not understand these are people who are in their eighth decade of life okay. these are people who are so much experience like uh -huh. when i talk about octogenarian mm -hmm. this is somebody who is an engineer but uh, is in his, his ninth decade for example or eighth decade in terms they of age years. they have expertise they it. have expertise uh -huh. these people are not offering mentorship programs to the young engineers like us in fact i have come out of that cocoon uh, just by myself i have never been mentored by these senior engineers no I, no one has mentored me now i'm coming out with a strong engineering background and i am also trying to organize mentorship programs for those who are still in high school and that's why i want to plead with them these octogenarians these mm. people who have a lot of experience the old that is the old professionals who are now in their eighth decade in mm. terms of age mm -hmm. they should come down and mentor these young engineers so that they also take over mm -hmm. once they 
have become senile. Now these are now these are the challenges that we are facing in, in, these are in, the in challenges. And, uh, I want to tell you that if we can have this mentorship programs mm -hmm. uh, right from the grassroots, mm -hmm. then we can even uh, identify these talents uh, at a tender age then we develop them mm -hmm. and then they become experts mm -hmm. in future mm -hmm. engineer i want us to finish this con this conversation uh, at 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 that point mm -hmm. uh, but you know you can come up with uh, some of these mentorship programs yourself i've even started uh, the mentorship program right now i'm mentoring five uh, good students mm -hmm. but they are still in high school so I'm high school wow yes, they are still in high school so mm -hmm. i'm mentoring them in terms of even guiding them to do coding because For i know i'm also an expert in scada and uh, plc program or technologies ah. so i'm even guiding them to do coding python coding and everything related to electrical engineering and they are doing very well for someone who is watching you and they'd like to reach out to you yes. is there a, 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 any way that they can be able to get you yes i'm all over in social media uh -huh. i have a page uh -huh. called engineer polo dindo and they can even uh, uh, join the page mm -hmm. because you know that will enable me to right. reach out to very many people because mm -hmm. i want to touch lives even across the globe thank you very much engineer yes, huh? yes. yes. follow him on, uh, on 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 facebook on engineer facebook. polo dindo engineer polo dindo that is my page my facebook is just polo dindo mm -hmm. because i opened the facebook when i was still uh, in high school and i've not attained the title engineer so uh -huh. right now I have a page But you, you can edit it. I can edit it, but uh, I have uh, just uh, made it to remain uh, this, the way it is. Or oh, the way it is. The way it All is. right. Thank yes. you very much, engineer. Yeah. Yes. It's a pleasure having you. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I wish you the best. You Thank are. You very much. You're, you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you very much, Ramagoko. That is what brings us to the end of this conversation today. It's all about career development in engineering. If you hear the engineer speaking, my friend, you'll feel like if you're becoming an engineer from the comfort of your home. Well, that brings us to the end of this conversation. The hashtag, as always, is Y in the morning on Twitter, at Ramagoko, at Y254 channel on Twitter and Facebook. Drop in your, your, your thoughts about engineer polo dindo and this conversation may god bless you god bless the work of your hands have a fantastic day see you again next week on monday my name is ram aguko <laughs>